Salutations, little boys and little girls. If you're watching this video, that means you're having a lizard problem. A monitor lizard problem, to be exact. So you have a monitor lizard, and you want to kill it with your fists. The fact that you're having this problem could stem from many things, ranging from you're a hunter, and you want to spice up your hunts, or a monitor lizard has been eating various things that belong to you, you've been cornered by one, and you need to kill it, or a monitor lizard slept with your wife and your heart is filled with thoughts of vengeance. There could be many more reasons for why you feel the way you do, but those are some of the most common reasons that people run into. For the sake of convenience, we're going to be focusing on one monitor lizard, the Komodo dragon, the mightiest of them all. If you look at the background footage, normally I'd play as Funky Kong, well, I play Mario Kart Wii, but to respect the Komodo dragon, I'm going to be playing as the most dinosaur-like character in the game, Birdo. Like I said, it's strictly because she's a dinosaur. No other reason why I picked her. Now, I know you're probably sitting there at home in your grimy little room thinking, Shut up, idiot. I know everything about Komodo dragons. I watch Animal Planet every day. And to that, I say, shut up. You know nothing. This may be a video, but I can still hear the sound of your bones creaking through time. You have zero muscle mass and probably look like the grandpa from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You will never defeat a Komodo dragon in your current form. Even if you think you have a bunch of extensive knowledge about this 200 pound slobber dinosaur, you're wrong. Shut up. Let's go over the commonly known facts. Komodo dragons are astonishingly quick, have slaughter that might as well be poisonous, and can sniff with such efficiency that you can't escape them until you leave their native land. Now, all of that makes the Komodo dragon seem pretty straightforward, right? Well, no. You're dead wrong. Komodo dragons are very complex creatures. For instance, you know Rad? Rad is a Komodo dragon, and he has lizard clout. Every single Komodo dragon has its own name, and having a name could be the difference between life and death in a fist fight. And I know you don't understand this, but don't worry. That's why I'm here. I'm going to use a metaphor to explain it to you. A metaphor about something that I am personally very familiar with, the hood. So you're in a gang, right? Well, you have this rival gang that you keep getting into fist fights with. No extreme violence, no gunfights, just fist fights. An obscene amount of fist fights. And the rival gang, they keep hyping up their leader. They keep saying stuff like, oh, Big P, he's gonna come and he's, he's gonna come after you. Big P is gonna punch you. Big P's gonna kick you. And then after that, he's gonna wrap your balls around your penis 12 times. And when they start saying that type of stuff, if you're a masochist, yeah, you're going to get excited, but to a normal person, you're going to start to fear Big P. And then, the final day of fighting between your two rival gangs comes. You're about to meet Big P. He's about to exit the house that he's been in this whole time. And you're shaking with anxiety and fear because of all the things you've heard about Big P. You've heard all these things and you're scared. And then, Big P comes out of the house. And he's a third grader riding on a bike that has training wheels. And yet you're still quaking with unmeasurable amounts of fear because of all the things you've been told about Big P, all these horrific things that you've heard about this guy, about this third grader. And that's basically the importance of names among Komodo dragons. The Komodo dragon that you're going to be fighting is named Pablo. He's Mexican. It is highly important that you dispel all fear from your mind of Pablo, because if you are afraid of Pablo during your fight with him, he's going to fold you into a paper airplane and throw you at two unnamed towers in New York City. The next thing you're going to need to know is that Komodo dragons are highly sensitive, not physically, but emotionally. If you're yelling very mean things at Pablo, like if you're calling him stupid and stuff like that, he'll go quiet. He'll look at you, and he'll stand on his hind legs. Pablo is then going to remove two gloves that have been designed to make it look like he has claws. In reality, Komodo dragons actually have hands with very long and crinkled fingers. If Pablo decides to do this, go ahead and find the nearest palm tree. Kick it until a coconut falls on your head, knocking you unconscious. This will null the pain of what Pablo is about to do to your limbs. Now that I've gone over what you shouldn't do, it's about time that I go over what you should be doing. 
Step 1. Give him the Sandman treatment. Grab a big pile of dirt, sand, whatever you can find, and throw it at Pablo. Pablo won't be able to recognize that you're attacking him because of how frail and weak you are. Go ahead and keep doing this until you've completely encased him in sand. Doing this will reduce his ability to see, because his sight is now terrible because there's a bunch of sand in his face, and all around him. Step 2. Bathe yourself in the environment. Pablo is still capable of sniffing out your musk. To counteract this phenomenon, just cover yourself in dirt, feces, grass, whatever you can find. Preferably feces. Now Pablo is going to have to rely entirely on his sense of sound to find you. Step 3. Sacrifice a lamb. This step is optional if you're strong, but let's be honest, your wheelchair-bound grandpa that's watching Jeopardy downstairs right now could probably beat you in a fight. So you're gonna need some help in this fight. Go ahead and dial up your boy Jesus H. Christ. Tell him that you're gonna send a lamb his way, and in return you want a strength upgrade. To kill the lamb, just stomp on it until it looks like a large pile of applesauce. Step 4. Realize I just saved your life. Even with divine intervention, you're too weak to fight a Komodo dragon. You're better off trying to get your wheelchair-bound grandpa to run one over with his wheels. Go ahead and dig up Pablo. Don't worry. While you were doing steps 2 and 3, he was suffocating under the weight of the dirt and sand. Now I know you're sitting there wondering, well, what am I going to do with the carcass now? Well, you can do many things with it, my little bean. You can wear Pablo's skull to ward off other Komodo dragons. This also has the added effect of warding off females more than usual, so it's a two-in-one package. You can also just swing it around by its tail. That's what I like to do with mine, but I won't judge you if you want to do something else with it. And those two examples are just scratching the surface of what you can do with the Komodo dragon carcass. Anyways, that's all I really have for now. But you can tune in next week when I teach you how to discipline that pesky gerbil of yours. Thank you for watching and have a good day.